Hello everybody, this is Terry Brunton and this is the Just Walking Podcast. Today we're talking about uh, subtle rebellion. You know, everything in our society is uh, designed to rebel against God. Our sin nature has a built-in rebellion against God. It's okay. God will use it for his glory. The problem comes when we miss out on God glorifying himself through us. With our rebellion in the way, God will use our rebellion to glorify himself. We have this very subtle idea that God is like us. It shows up in our self-love. We somehow think that God will use us even when we love ourselves more than we love God. Most of us would never say that we love ourselves more than we love God. However, our, our actions tell a different story. Saying out loud that we love God really doesn't glorify very much. That is, until our actions line up with what we say. Our actions are a product of our true beliefs. Our counterfeit actions are a poor imitation of Christ's likeness. The lost folks around us will see it as hypocrisy. You can fool yourselves, uh, and you can fool loveless Christians easier than you can fool people who don't know Jesus Christ is Lord. You would probably never say that you don't love Jesus Christ, but your lack of love for others, other believers and followers of Jesus Christ, will tell on you. Your attempted acts of civility toward other believers will show through. Some folks don't even try to love other believers. It shows up when there's a disagreement in the church. We can look worse than the world around us. They see us and only see our rebellion and lack of love. And then they avoid us like the plague. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Better said, when you get around to loving me the way that I love you, then you will keep my commandments. We don't keep his commandments because we love ourselves more than we love Jesus. That's our sin nature and our subtle rebellion showing through. It may surprise you to know that Jesus only gave his followers two commands before he left to go back to heaven. The first command is that we should love each other. That's so the world will see our love and that would prove that we are his followers. The other command is to love the world the same way that he loved them. He said, that we are to go and make disciples and teach them to love each other. Remember that Jesus said that loving God and loving our neighbor is is as much as we love ourselves sums up the law. We don't have to follow the law, but we need to love each other. The product of God loving us enough to send Jesus to die on a cross is that we will fall deeply in love with God. If you don't love God enough to love people more than you love you, then you need to love God more. Most of the Christians that I know can barely stomach to be around one another or other Christians for a couple hours a week even. That's too hard for them. The only way that they can Love God more than is to spend more time with him. When you spend more time with God, you will see his great love for you. Spend time reading God's word, the Bible. Surrender what you think you know about God and let his Holy Spirit teach you to love. When you get around to knowing God, you will fall deeply in love with him. When you fall deeply in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will keep his commandments. His commands to love his followers and the rest of the world. When that happens, God has given you the power like no other so that the rest of the world can see Jesus Christ in and through you. I can say that I love God, but if if you don't see the love of Christ in and through me, 
I really love me more than I love God. You be the judge. I love you. The verses that I put on here today is uh, John 3.16, for God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Then Romans 5.8, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. That's my favorite verse in the Bible. It just kind of shows us everything. John 13, 34 and 35 through 35 says, So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Colossians 3, 1 through 10. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. When Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand, think about the things of heaven and not the things of earth. For you died to your life, to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with the sensual Im uh, immorality and impurity and lust and, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when, you, when your life was still a part of this world. But now, it is the time to get rid of the anger, rage, malice behavior, slander, and dirty language. You don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Then John 14, 15 through 23 says, If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them, and will reveal myself to each of them. Verse 22, Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself to us, to only to us and not to the world at large? Verse 23, Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will and we will come and make our homes with each of them. Then it goes on, John fourteen, twenty four through thirty six. Anyone who does not love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when God the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, we will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. John fifteen nine through 14 says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. 
When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. Then I'm going to skip over to Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Then the 11 disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all that I commanded. I have given I have the, all of the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Then Acts 1.8, he says the same thing in a different way. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and, and to the ends of the earth. So, what's our reaction to all of this? Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2, Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into the new person by changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God, God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. <clears throat> so today, as you think about subtle rebellion, understand that God's bigger than anything that we can ever imagine, think or imagine. And the only way that we can understand anything about God is when we surrender our lives to him in such a way that we get us out of the way, get our love for us out of the way. Let him do a mighty work in your life today because to, just to tell you the truth, he wants to use you to glorify himself. And he wants to use you where you have surrendered yourself to him to glorify himself through. But make no mistake about it. He's going to glorify himself with or without you. Well, I love you. And thanks again for listening to Just Walking. And we'll see you next time.